if we all talk about uh, prevention, for example, uh, if we talk it just among us health people, we won't get anywhere because uh, prevention is uh, dependent on so many other factors like environmental standards, uh, noise pollution, light pollution. Prevention, for example, is uh, totally dependent on social cohesions. And all these matters are not matters for a classic minister of health or a health agency or ministry of health. So that's why we're talking about health in all politics, to exchange the views and, the, and to convince the others that they have to change also so that the people can stay healthy. It's unfashionable to say we need facts, post-facts, post-truth politics. We need facts and we need evidence of both the causes and what you can do to address the causes. And one of the things I try and do, naively, is appeal to politicians' better instincts. And the question is, why did you come into politics? Most of them came into politics because they wanted to do something for the populations that they serve. If health equity is not improving, then what they came into politics to do isn't working. I work for the World Health Organization, making sure that health is promoted at the highest levels of the United Nations. And so increasingly we see the dialogue about health taking place in New York with the Secretary General on matters that are of concern to the whole of society, not just from a health perspective alone. And that carries forward to presidents and prime ministers in governments and not just the ministers of health in countries. There are many challenges, but I think the overall challenge is how to continue to deliver high quality health care to all those who need it uh, in the face of greater needs for health care and also uh, resource uh, constraints in, in practically most countries in Europe. Uh, and therefore, um, that will be a challenge that will require increased cooperation, but also increased uh, evidence to make sure that we can help member states take the right decisions in a timely manner. Our main role is to provide tools, mechanisms, and also to help member states network with each other. Uh, there's a lot they can learn from each other, but of course requires uh, a facilitator to help that make it happen. I think that some of the challenges that we face today will be solved because we will have you know, solution-based health systems. We're not going to say, oh, you have this disease, you need that drug. We're going to take a, a holistic approach to your condition and then the therapeutics are just going to be one element of the whole value proposition. So the challenge will not be access to medicine, but whether we have the right solution package to help you live a better life and have a better health. But we hope that healthcare systems can modernize and we can help them modernize in uh, improving the whole service package. Big data is electronic medical records. It's the ability to link medical records with all the other data sets that exist in health system. It's the ability to leverage that to improve decision-making processes for clinicians, but also to monitor disease much better, also to improve policy-making, and also to have disease surveillance. So yes, there is a lot of hype, but there are a lot of things which are perhaps much simpler than what we think to do. Getting there is going to be the challenge. Hopefully, after 20 years of talking, health in all politics becomes a reality in the future. And this is something that the citizens can feel in every aspect of their life. It will be a dream come true. What we need today to understand, EU is very progressive, peaceful allies to, 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 to present new approaches. Not, you know, something first. People first.